uh, a good set of numbers by any account in terms of the benchmarks. Um, it's the second time you have revised your guidance for production this year. Is this as good as it gets, 80 to 85,000? Yes, good morning. No, I'm very pleased with the results. And as you mentioned, we, we've uh, uh, revised our guidance for the second time. And that's really on the back of our two major assets, one unoperated asset called Alvim and the, and in particular unoperated assets uh, called Edva Grieg, which, we're, which has performed really well. And uh, we've just increased the capacity, which it allow, did allow, uh, allow us to increase the revised guidance. And on, in, while we're dealing with the guidance, Alex, good morning to you. Um, you. You've actually managed to revise down your cash operating cost forecast to 460. It was 490, and I think it was only 490 for a quarter. How low can that cost guidance get? Is there more to come on that front? Yeah, actually, we got it in uh, the beginning of the year at uh, over five dollars, then four ninety, and now we're getting four sixty. There is still uh, room to go down. Uh, I think well, we are already at record low, and that's really in relation to the very young assets and very good assets, are, which are very efficient and uh, provide this low operating cost. In future, of course, we we have the major discovery on Svedrup, which will come on stream in 2019, and that will give more scope to uh, lower or, or operating Cost. Um, let's talk about one of the projects that you share with Statoil, Corp for Gel. Um, no, that's not very good pronunciation by me, but we'll carry on. Um, some of the analysts are saying this could be a 10 billion barrels in the high case scenario. Um, how important is this well for you? And um, what do you make of those estimates, 10 billion uh, barrels in, ter in terms of the Barents Sea and the delivery on that project? Yeah. Well, first of all, Southern Barren Sea is a key area in terms of organic growth for London Petroleum. We, we already made uh, two discoveries. Copfiel is, uh, is obviously a, a large structure. Uh, it's actually, in comparison, it's almost four times the size of Jon Svedrup, which is a multi-billion barrels uh, field. Now, it's, it's uh, further to the east, and it's early days to, to come up with the specific numbers, and we have to really drill a first well to better understand the reservoirs and the and the content in terms of other carbon, if it's gas, oil. So, but obviously a very exciting well that is coming and soon to, to start. Uh, exciting, and the upside could be huge, Alex. But what about the downside here? It, it, give us some idea of the timing. Is this year going to be make or break uh, for the Barents Sea and the opportunities um, that, that exist in, in your industry there? No, I don't think so. But, you know, we have to realize the Southern Mount Sea is a very large area. It's almost as big as one uh, North Sea basin. Um, in the last four years, four significant discoveries have been made, and, and I think we're just scratching the surface. Um, there will be more to come. Uh, th this year, there will be some exciting uh, drilling for, sh for sure, but there will be a lot more to come. And I think for the years, uh, for the next 10 years, there will be a lot of drilling activity in this part of the world. So it's. Uh, uh, we're just in the beginning of a, of a very intensive and exciting exploration era in the Southern Barents Sea. Well, Alex, you, you're at the beginning of that exploration, but one thing which seems to be peaking is uh, the disconcert over diesel, the rise of electric. To what extent do you think, I spoke with Ben Van Burden, the CEO over at Shell, and he basically said peak oil was coming. When do you think peak oil is coming? Because that's a risk to your business. It takes 15 years to get some of these things up and running to peak. He says 20, 2030, 2040s. Would you agree? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question. I think, I, think the, I, would, I would tend to agree. Uh, I do think, nevertheless, that uh, hydrocarbon are here to stay and the, the world needs energy, needs a lot of energy. The, there is no question that eventually we're going to go through a transition period. But um, you can have all the electrical car in the world that, that will reduce perhaps the consumption by 1.5 million barrels of oil. So for the, certainly for, uh, until 2030, there will be a strong demand, mainly coming from uh, countries such as India and China, and uh, there will be still the need to find more oil and, uh, and produce it efficiently. So, um, yeah. When do you see oil prices heading higher from here, Alex? I know we've talked about this in the past. Do you see what OPEC is doing at the moment as being effective, or do you think we have to wait for what you've described as the underinvestment in the sector at the moment? Do we have to wait for that to take hold? Yeah, I think we've seen a few things. Uh, obviously, we had a, an era of oversupply. We've seen four years of high, high oil price, which has created this oversupply situation, and that has been uh, exasperated by the U.S. Uh, shale oil. 
Now, I think the, the OPEC quota that you just mentioned has, has an impact for sure. Um, we also see a very strong demand. Uh, we've seen demand in excess of 1.5 million barrels of oil uh, for the coming years, which is stronger than average. Um, and I think we start to see also inventories coming down. So my, my view is that this last three years, uh, we, the industry, particularly the offshore industry, has underinvested, and uh, you will see um, the impact of that. And that there will be um, you know, more balanced supply and demand, which will lead to a higher oil price. Uh, but it's taken perhaps longer than what the industry has expected to, to recover. Alex, just to close off, some people have to deal with uh, Dan Loeb. Some people have to deal with activist investors. Sir, you have the London family. Are they going to remain uh, the controlling owner of London Petroleum? Uh, that's a question to ask them directly. I think for now they're very excited about the business in, in Norway. Uh, we have a very a fantastic business there with a fantastic growth, and we can continue to create a lot of value for shareholders. And we are in a country which is producing bars in a very efficient way when you think about uh, the environment and the emission of gas. So I think the London family is there for the long term, but eventually that's a question to ask them.